the most abundant energy source on the planet with the potential to provide clean renewable power to billions yet less than one percent of the world's energy currently comes from the sun but now businesses are starting to take notice like never before investing in new large-scale projects in the world's deserts in just six hours deserts receive more energy from the sun than humans consume in a whole year no wonder then that many believe our deserts could hold the key to powering our future in this episode of Earth's Frontiers, we take you to a college in India that's training an unorthodox batch of recruits to bring solar power to remote villages. And cloudy Switzerland, where a new invention could revolutionize our use of personal solar devices. But first, to the Mojave Desert, where industrial-scale solar farms are fast becoming big business. Nipton, California, population 18. In a valley where wagon trails once crisscrossed the Mojave Desert, and North American frontiersmen once mined for gold, modern day trailblazers are again mining the desert, this time for what's arguably nature's most powerful resource the sun. This is um, the site for the first uh, power block. So down there at the middle of this area, you'll have a tower that is you know, the size of a 33-story building. Bright Source Energy Executive Carlos Aguila surveys construction on a projected multi-billion dollar facility. Once completed, the company says this solar complex will double the current solar energy output in the entire US providing electricity to some 140,000 homes. Uh, the Mojave Desert is really the, the yardstick by which every other solar region in the world is measured. Um, here you have the combination of a huge um, availability of sun, as you see, up to 320 days of sun per year. And also you have population centers that are right near here in Las Vegas and down in California. Bright Source's new solar thermal plant will generate 392 megawatts of power. As existing Bright Source facilities show, their new complex will consist of thousands of mirrors called heliostats that will reflect the sun's rays onto a central water tower, producing steam that will ultimately generate electricity. Concern about fossil fuels and some regional regulatory mandates are among what's driving the rise of renewable energy in the U.S. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, the U.S. generates 8% of its energy from renewable sources. Less than 1% of that comes from solar. There had been a study done by the National Renewable Energy Laboratory several years ago that indicated an area of land in Nevada about 100 miles on each side, a square area, would power the whole United States with existing technologies. So the solar resource is so immense, it's hard to really comprehend what it could do. On another side of the Mojave Desert, in Boulder City, Nevada, Sempra Generation's Jim Sahagian touts the virtues of the company's 154-hectare photovoltaic solar plant, completed in December 2010. It's the largest photovoltaic energy facility in the United States. It constitutes nearly a total of a million PV panels, and it produces electricity when the sun shines. While these big developments are flourishing in the U.S., the solar industry here is to an extent playing catch-up to its European counterpart. Spain and Germany were early adopters of uh, solar PV and solar thermal technologies. Um, the United States is a little later to the game, specifically with respect to solar energy. However, we're coming on very, very strong. We probably represent the largest demand potential on a moving forward basis of, of all of the countries out there right now. Also in Boulder City, Nevada, the Spanish company, Athiona Energy, operates its own solar thermal power plant, opened in 2007. Bob Cable is the plant manager. Well, I think we've built 
proven this plant is the most reliable and, and performance enhanced plant there is to date. And uh, it, this is the first in Nevada that was built. Uh, it's almost the largest in the U.S. Our company has also built five plants in Spain of, of equal size. So we're, we think we're at the forefront of this technology. Despite the fact that renewable energy is viewed as green energy, some environmentalists still call for a careful approach. We're in the Mojave Desert. Um, the desert is a very delicate area, uh, so there can be some damage. Um, there's also waste issues. Some of the companies have a, a technology that's more efficient, but it has a toxic chemical, so they have to be very careful on how they bring, how they package it now, but then they also have to use a waste um, recovery system where they bring the, the uh, product back and then recycle it. Based on everything that we've looked at, that these panels will have, on average, a 30-year life, and they could go longer. They're, they're static, they're benign, and recycling them is something that is, I think, going to be an integral part of, of uh, the life cycle on, on these products. As the industry evolves, a new day in the Mojave Desert means it's likely another solar project is in the works. Even tiny Nipton has moved into the 21st century, installing its own 80 kilowatt solar power station, apart from big developments in the region. On scales both small and large, pioneers used the Mojave Desert to help develop the nation more than two centuries ago. And now, history is on the verge of repeating itself. Up next on Earth's Frontiers. I want to pick up a grandmother from every underdeveloped, least developed country in the world. An initiative in India that aims to teach these African grandmothers to replace darkness with light.